just to give you guys a bit of background on what the goal of this Chevy Trax is, it's really their most affordable kind of entry level vehicle for the lineup. And it starts at $20,500, but if you add destination and the freight and all that good stuff, it goes up to like $21,500, but all the trim levels start at under $25,000. So it's supposed to be like a value proposition here with this car and all the different grades that you can get it in. So this one right here is the one RS model. And what I wanna really dive into is the exterior real quick. So let's get into that. So starting with the front design, because it's the RS, RS stands for Rally Sport, more of that performance edgy look. It has a nice blacked out front grille. It's a gloss black. If you come look a little closer here, it's got the black Chevy bow tie with the chrome surround. So more of that sporty styling. It does go down here as well with this black chrome, I'm sorry, this black gloss over here with some more functional air vents. And overall, it looks very stylistic. You do get kind of like a dark gunmetal gray chrome that extends out here and looks nice. And it starts to kind of frame the headlights down here. This is the actual head unit. There's a gloss back you know, piece down there. And then this one right here, it is a not, it's not an LED light. It's just an amber and that's your turn signal right there. And I believe it acts like an LED or like it acts like a daytime ring light when it's on, but it's not like the uh, LED time, daytime ring lights that you get on the active or the, the nicer trims. Uh, this is more like the LS, but like with a more of a sporty take. So you get a lot of the base features on this one. So just keep that in mind as we go around. It's more of like a appearance package for the RS more so than the amenities on the inside for the two RS, which is a higher price point. Come down here. This one does have the 18 inch wheels. So you can get a 17 and 18 and a 19 inch wheel package on this uh, Trax. And this one has a, a lower profile tire than the LS trim that would have a thicker sidewall, 17 smaller and 17 inch wheel. Uh, these ones measuring at 225, 55, R18. You guys are curious, another Gertier Assurance. So more of an economical tire. Uh, you can probably easily uh, break traction with these, with these tires. They're not super performance oriented. Uh, but it does look cool with this nice two-tone uh, wheel option. So coming around the side, you do have nice plastic fender lining. It gives it more of that, you know, crossover look because ultimately this isn't a sedan. It's more of a lifted crossover vibe, but it is pretty compact and it's pretty small. So coming around the side here, you do have blacked out mirror caps. That's part of that RS appearance package. You do not get blacked out A-pillar. It's painted black plastic uh, surrounds on the windows. All rear windows standard on all of the uh tracks is privacy glass so basically it means they're tinting the rear windows for you so you don't need to tint the rear windows on your car that's i think that's you're saving yourself a couple hundred bucks right there just by getting that from the factory that's nice if you wanted to kind of increase your you know heat uh from getting in, the amount of heat that gets in the vehicle you could add a layer of tint on top of it but you get that from the factory which is nice it's this this and that window all have that private privacy glass and that's nice you don't get keyless entry and go. We do just show that on the door handles, pretty basic. We'll show you the key fob when you get inside. Pretty old school, but it works and it gets the job done, which is which is nice. You do also get, you know, the black plastic that goes underneath down here, kind of gives it a more aggressive look. Makes it feel like the car sits a little higher because that blacked out lower portion. And then it comes around here, uh, which is nice. If you come around back, you'll see this uh, taillight design. It's kind of like a, you know, boomerang setup. Kind of gives some Nissan vibes, to be honest. Uh, but it's nice and you get this nice, uh, you know, vortex generators. I, mean, I don't know how fast or how effective these are, but it's a nice little piece to make it look aggressive. Take a step back though, get a nice view of the full like rear three quarter right here. You can see it's a, uh, it is nice. You have a swept roof line up here with this like deck lid spoiler that sticks out. Uh, this is tinted as well on the back. So you get nice privacy there. You get your uh, windshield wiper mounted at the bottom. Uh, they're not mounted up here. There is not much space to put up here, so that's fine. And then you get your RS badging down here for the one RS trim, and then black plastic, and then chrome plastic underneath here with some nice texture. Nothing really crazy going on here, guys. You get parking sensors, sensors a good amount of safety features like pre-collision assist, um, your four-wheel disc brakes, all that good stuff, blind spot monitoring. So a lot of safety features are standard with this, as you'd expect in 2023. And for a price in the, the, the low 20s, um, let's show you the storage space real quick. We do have stuff in here. So we're gonna expose ourselves real quick and stuff we put in our, in our car right here. Uh, 20 some cubic feet with the seats up. If you fold the seats down, you have 54 cubic feet of storage space. And that's a lot. They really, they lengthened this 11 inches longer than their previous tracks. And that ultimately improved rear cargo space because that overhang kind of stuck out more. You don't need departure angles on this thing. It doesn't matter, uh, but 
It also helps the second row uh, leg room. So we'll, uh, we'll show you that. It also sits two inches wider. So that also helps benefit interior as well as the track is wider. So that helps handling and, and performance, performance, quote unquote. But let's hop into the back seats here. So getting into the back seats, they are cloth, they are fabric, they're pretty basic. You get a nice decent texture here, this like white insert with this nice little pattern on it. Uh, you On the higher trims, you'll get USB-A and USB-C ports right here. And uh, you get USB-A and USB-C ports right here. A little cubby, it's pretty deep, it's nice, it's something, you can just kind of chuck some things in there if you want. Uh, no seat back pockets, that'd be reserved for some higher trims, the 2RS, the Active. But if you go to the door panels, guys, it's pretty straightforward. Windows, door handles, speakers, pockets. That's kind of all you could really expect at this price point. These seats fold down really easily. They're really light, 60-40, nice flat load floor to give you that larger uh, storage, storage capacity. But guys, the leg room, that's where I'm sitting. I'm five foot eight, but a six foot person can sit behind themselves pretty comfortably. I'm sure other reviewers will demonstrate that because they're taller than, than I am. And then a lot of headroom, guys. Do you get a light here? Pretty basic stuff. Let's hop into the front seat and talk about more features you get with this with this vehicle. So, real quick guys, I did want to start with the key because it's normal. I do want to start this thing up to show you guys how it works. So, we got to start it up for that. But um, let's start with the uh, the seats, guys. We show them the front, we show them the back, let's show them in the front. Uh, a little bit of a nicer pattern, but they're all fabric. They slide manually, which is faster than the power stuff. So who cares, once you have your setting, you're pretty much you know, chilling. It's faster, it's more efficient, it saves weight, gets you better efficiency, guys. So that's not that's not true. Don't don't quote me. It might though. Uh, but as far as the RS1 or one RS trim goes on the inside, it's really more of that sporty appearance. So you get that on the dash. These vents have a nice red accent around them, and that's cool. A nice red uh, line that goes here. This this little texture kind of fades into nothingness. I like that it's not piano black, not fingerprint, you know, magnet. And this nice texture up here, I like that a lot. Even though it's plastic. They embrace it and they make it look cool. And then we go into tech, guys. Eight inch touchscreen standard, even on the LS, the base model. And that's an eight inch touchscreen that gets wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. But the thing that's a little annoying is there's no wireless charger on this base model. So having a wireless Apple CarPlay in a car that doesn't have wireless charging is kind of, I feel like a, it's, it's like a contradiction. You don't really want that. You do get USB ports, you're gonna plug in anyways. So you might as well set up as a wired Apple CarPlay so you're not accidentally draining your battery if you're not using it. So just keep that in mind. But it is convenient for you who want to use it, they can. 12 volt outlet, you do get storage down here. You have your auto start stop for that three cylinder which we'll talk about a little bit more. And then lane keep assist. Cup holders, nice little cubby for your key if you want to put that in there. Um, your park brake, six speed, automatic transmission, nice little RS badging, red stitching, that's kind of part of the RS. Little cubby right here simple simple storage compartment and then no padding pretty basic but what you do get really nice on this R1 RS trim I keep calling it RS1 it's a 1 RS trim is this perforated leather on the steering wheel uh, nice bolsters here it's more aggressive a flat bottom there's plastics down here but it is overall a nicer steering wheel than you would get on the LS uh, trim so combine that with the fact that you get RS on the on the gauge cluster this one does not have that fully, fully digital gauge cluster. You'll see that on the Active and the 2RS trim and the uh, LT trim. So it's just a basic tachometer, basic speedometer. We'll uh, rev it out for you. You know, Can't really expect much out of this thing, guys. So yeah, as far as interior goes, you do not have a sunroof on this one. It is an option that's available on other ones. I think if you fully load one of these out, you're in the like 27s, um, which is a lot of money. So I feel like you're adding seven thousand dollars on a twenty thousand dollar car. You're kind of, you know, really getting up there. I feel like I'd try to keep this within the twenty four, kind of get one of the trim levels and get a base and kind of stick with it. That's how I do it. Uh, but overall, you get really good visibility in here. Um, we drove it around and it drove well. It was very comfortable, very well insulated because this has noise cancellation standard. So it uses the speakers and microphones to uh, cancel out those uh, constant frequencies. And to get that in a car this uh, this cheap is actually pretty crazy. Usually high-end cars have that type of stuff. But it also helps them, you know, account for the fact that they know this is going to be a car that's not as well insulated, but they give you some tech to, to make up for it. And I think that's cool. Sun visor is pretty standard. Uh, no light 
That's usually something reserved for like higher uh, trim vehicles. They do fold. They do not slide, but they exist. So if you really care about stuff, get some window tint on the front. Follow state laws, of course. Uh, but yeah, aside from that, guys, it is a very simple cabin back here, but it's very spacious front, rear, and in the trunk. So you could do a lot with this thing. With this setup, this size of vehicle, I think is very uh, versatile. It's because it's compact, nice for small parking spots, but it's also uh, practical.